Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Moon and Papa, and I'm here with legendary trader Gareth Soloway. Gareth, what is going on? What's going on? How are you? Honestly, this week has been jam packed with filming, especially something special coming for the Verified Investing Network. You guys will find out more about it later. But I want to just take a minute to talk to you, Gareth, um, about a recent trade that you shared online. Mm -hmm. But as well, I kind of want to pick your brain and see if you and I are of the same mind when it comes to DCA and taking losses. Right. So do you mind telling us a little bit about the trade that you had recently with uh, one of the bank stocks? Yeah, absolutely. So, Sorry. so I think one of the most important things to recognize is as well as I am renowned in the trading world, I still take losses, right? No trader is going to be void of losses. If they tell you they are, definitely run the other way. That's the bottom line. <laughs> um, so I had this trade. I, 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 it was a calculated risk. The bank stocks were collapsing. I said, all right, let me pick up a tiny position in SBNY. Um, literally right. within, I feel like, an hour or two of, of me doing that, they halted the stock. The government took it over. It opened a few days ago at pennies on the dollar. I lost about 99%. No fun. But this is the key. All right, number one, when I was getting into the trade, I did a risk assessment. And I said, listen, I know that there's this possibility. So yeah. yes, I could make a lot of money, but I wanna make sure that I'm allocating a tiny amount only. So I allocated 1% of my portfolio. So just to put that in perspective, wow. if you have $100,000, put a thousand bucks in, a thousand bucks in. All right, I lost it all but I think, you know, 50 bucks or whatever it was, but I was only down to 99,000, right? So as as negative as that is, you think about a 99% loss and you're like, that stinks, like he must have been wrecked. The honest truth <laughs> is we had another trade that day mm -hmm. where it was 3.6% of the portfolio and we made like 12%. So right there knocks out almost half of that loss. And so my point is, is that when you have losers, that's gonna happen. But the question is, are you analyzing it properly mm. so that you're only putting a certain amount at risk? There are gonna be safer investments that you put more money in, sure. higher risk ones that you put less in. Yeah, I for people that have taken my courses on The Better Traders, you guys know that one of the trading rules that we have, even in the trading journal, is I will not use more than 10% of my portfolio per trade. Yep. And I've actually been following Gareth's trading signals for a while, and he'll give a signal and then he'll say like, one percent. Yeah. And when I see two percent, then I go, whoa, like that's a big, that's <laughs> a big right. increase. But right. for a lot of you that are watching this channel and you follow me for any amount of time, especially if you know about AB trading, which is going to be low cap tokens, low volume, crazy moves, you know the strategies that I teach. But I think there's a lot of knowledge to learn from what Gareth just said, too, in that you don't want to go all in, especially when you're thinking about something that's high risk. Like he was going into that trade knowing that Things are shaky with banks. <laughs> I, knew, I knew the possibility going into it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I always say this to my members, go in with your eyes wide open. Don't be mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just gonna jump in and not look, right? You have to go in and say, listen, this is what's the what's my worst case scenario? Mm -hmm. If you always look at your worst case scenario, mm -hmm. you, you tend to be much more cautious entering. Mm -hmm. And again, in certain trades, I'll start with 1% and then it goes a little against me. I add another 1% or maybe two or three or 4% and I accumulate dollar cost average. Yeah. In this case, it was 1% and that was it because sure. of the risk level. And I think yeah. that's really important to understand. So let's, let's just talk about that a bit because mm -hmm. I am, well, I, I have a different approach, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm using my bots, those bots are designed to be dollar cost averaging trades. Like I'm already going into it with the mindset that, well, if it uses up all of my available safety trades and it falls further, well, I'm gonna establish beforehand where I wanna layer more funds just in case it falls further. Right. And I think that's really important to make that distinction as a trader. Because if you just go into something eyes wide, or eyes wide shut, no, not, not the Stanley Kubrick movie, <laughs> yeah. um, but trying to just not look at the loss, but think I'm gonna make so much, I think that's the wrong approach. You, totally you have wrong. to go into a trade thinking, this is specifically a DCA trade, therefore I'm gonna have predefined levels, not levels based off of fear or FOMO, or feeling like, ah, I think I just wanna add more now. Like there's no gut feelings right. in this. No. There's predetermined levels and you let the trade play out. Right. And I know from some of your signals that I've been following, especially back in February, there were a couple of them that you were like, add to this one. So I, I do know that you use DCA. Yeah. So I just want to hear a little bit more about how you are using DCA principles. Yeah, so so the first thing is, is once I started using DCA, mm -hmm. my win rate went sky high, 
right? Yeah. So, and I think your bot says the same thing, right? Yep. Is that that's really a method. So number one, when people go all in on their first buy, they can't maneuver. And yeah. maneuverability is so important in the investing right. world. Uh, number two, when they go all in, they tend to be emotional because it's a lot of money yeah. to them, right? It doesn't matter who it is, but you know, if you're going all in, it's going to be a lot of money to you. And the market is just the nature of any market, crypto market, stock market, it's, it's geared to push you to the limits. And so again, you'll hear how people, you know, again, people that bought at 69,000, it was pushing them, it, they, they were holding back and then it got, it knew just the level to get up to get them to go long. And same thing on the downside, broke mm -hmm. 20,000, went to 15.7 just the right amount to probably get a bunch of people to stop out and panic right? right so so you have to by going smaller it keeps you more emotionless yeah and that's yeah. super important and then again like i said the, my win rate went through the roof i look at so when i get into a position before mm -hmm. i even pick up anything stock or crypto or whatever mm -hmm. it's okay what how what's my full position going to look like mm -hmm. is it a hundred thousand is it fifty thousand now let me divide that into segments based mm -hmm. on risk based on levels and so let's say i divide it into four so i'm taking you know twenty five thousand of a hundred thousand trade and i'm saying okay first buy is here here's my next technical level mm -hmm. i'm going to put one here an order, order here and so forth and then that again puts you in a position where emotion yeah. causes levels to pierce mm -hmm. but you're taking advantage of that by doing the dcaing yeah, yeah. And I've seen that too. Like ever since I took your courses, learning more about these opportunities of even piercing these, uh, w what should be perceived as a super strong support level or resist le resistance level, seeing mm. those pierces are actually opportunities in disguise. They are. That's what I tell people in our courses too. At DCA, you have the predefined levels. And if it falls further, just sit on your hands because you shouldn't have gone all in mm -hmm. on that trade and look at that as a huge opportunity. Because like you, when I finally go DCA into a position that's maybe down 60, 70, 80%, that return on investment, when that price starts to come up, not only helps my account to rebuoy, to repeg, mm -hmm. but their profit that I take on the upside is so juicy. Yes. Yes, and, and believe it or not, on the outside, I don't know if you do this, but a lot of times when I'm dealing with a, a larger position, like let's say I had to DCA in four times, mm -hmm. a lot of times when it gets back to my break even or slightly in the money, I may reduce that by yeah. just a little bit yeah. because what that does is it gives me the new maneuverability that if it dips again exactly. i can re-add and then my average i'm working my average constantly yeah. constant like kneading bread right you're just <laughs> constantly working that average to your advantage is there going to be a future verified investing bakery heck yeah we'll teach some <laughs> classes i no clue what i'm going to teach but we'll make it happen we're going to teach people how to make the dough that's right <laughs> what about wax on wax off that's right that's right <laughs> Well, Gareth, I know you're a very busy man and you got other interviews planned for today, but thank you for just taking some time to talk with me. And it's fun to pick your brain about DCA. It's something that I'm super passionate about. Mm, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And uh, I can't wait to bring more content between the two of us to everyone yeah. out there. Absolutely. Next time, you got to come to Japan. I'm in. Awesome. <laughs> well, until the next time, guys, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.